Hello, welcome. You can see here I am excited to discuss dividing polynomials. And um, why is that? Well, when you have a polynomial function, let's say you call it p of x, that's really interesting in and of itself. But when we want to understand rational functions, we realize that a rational function is simply a ratio of two polynomial functions. So that tells us that in order to make sense of polynomial functions and rational functions and how they relate to each other, we're going to have to learn how to divide polynomials. So knowing how to divide polynomials helps us make sense of this whole universe of rational functions, and that's fascinating to me. So let's look at a problem together to make sense of what's going on. So let's say we have a function, and a polynomial function, and it's called p of x, and that's x cubed minus 8x plus 7. And we want to know, we want to show that p of 1 equals 0. And then we want to factor p of x completely. All right, so let's work on this. So we want to show that p of 1 equals 0. Let's do that first. So if we plug in 1, we get 1 cubed minus 8 times 1 plus 7. And that's just 1 minus 8 plus 7. That's 0. OK. What does that mean? Well, there's a theorem in this section. I, I want you to read it, look at it closely. It says uh, whenever you plug in a value c, right, p of c equals the remainder for the factor x minus c, which is really an amazing observation. So in this case, now we know something. This 0 represents the remainder if we try to divide our polynomial by x minus 1. So that means x minus 1 is a factor, right? There's no remainder. So x minus 1 is a factor of p of x. And that's, this is called the factor theorem. So this is the, there's the remainder theorem here. Remainder theorem. And there's the factor theorem. Now in the videos and the reading, you can see what these, fa these theorems say explicitly and how to prove them and how they're related to each other. But the factor theorem tells us that if there is no remainder, then this thing is a factor of the polynomial, which makes sense about the way we divide things. If you divide by a number and there's no remainder, then you're dividing by a factor of the number, right? Uh, 40 divided by 8 is 5 with a remainder of 0 because 8 is a factor of 40, right? That's how this stuff works. So what does that mean? Well, if that's a factor of it, we know x minus 1 times something has to equal our polynomial, the x cubed minus 8x plus 7. And now, dun dun dun, this is where polynomial division comes into play because we could say then, if this is true, x minus 1 times something is the polynomial, then this polynomial, I don't want to use pink, if this polynomial right here is divided by this factor, we should get the missing factor. And this is the polynomial long division. It's already coming into use, and we haven't even gotten to rational functions yet. Wow. So let's show how to make that work. So now we set up the division. And if you haven't seen long division before, let me know. I can send you some tutorials. But I don't think you even necessarily need to know much about long division here. Um, we can explain this process algebraically and make sense of it. So what we do is we set up x cubed minus 8x plus 7. That's our dividend, but we want to make room here. We want to have descending powers of x squared. So we'll put 0x squared. There's no x squared in there. I want to put 3, 2. I want those powers to count down consecutively. Minus 8x plus 7. And we're dividing that, this is the division symbol, by our divisor x minus 1. So we want to find out how many times x minus 1 goes into this polynomial, and that will give us the other factor. So to do that, we look at the leading term here of our dividend, and divided by the leading term of our divisor. x cubed divided by x is x squared. So that means so far, if we multiply x squared by x minus 1, we can see, have we reached our polynomial yet, or is there a remainder? So we want to test that out. So x squared times x minus 1 is x cubed minus x squared times negative 1 is minus x squared. Then we subtract to see, have we reached our polynomial, or is there a remainder? x cubed minus itself is 0. 
negative 0 is well, just 0. Minus negative x squared is plus x squared. Negative 8x minus nothing is negative 8x. And then 7 minus nothing is 7. So there's a remainder. This is our remainder. We haven't got there yet. So, so the question now is, how many times does our divisor go into this? Because there's still some left that we have to deal with. So we divide the leading terms. x squared divided by x is x plus x. This is a plus. And then we multiply x by our divisor to see, is there a remainder? x times x minus 1 is x squared minus x. Subtract, and there's still a remainder. x squared minus itself is 0. But negative 8x minus negative x is negative 8x plus x, or negative 7x. 7 minus nothing is 7. So this is our remainder. But we can still divide our divisor into it. So negative 7x divided by x is negative 7. And then we see now, is there still a remainder, or have we finally reached every part? Negative 7 times x minus 1 is negative 7x plus 7. And when we subtract here, we get 0. And this. Whatever we end with, this, this will always be our remainder. So that's our remainder. And that tells you a lot of things. Well, it tells you that if you take, let's highlight it now in a different color, this x minus 1, that divisor, and multiply it by this quotient, this other factor, you will get p of x. That's what it's telling you. These are the two factors. So now we can make a statement that our polynomial, which was x cubed minus 8x, plus 7 is the same thing as x minus 1 times x squared plus x minus 7. Okay, So that's what we're doing here. This is the long division does connect polynomial functions to rational functions, and we will get there. But we see so far that it's helping us uh, find factors as well. All right. Hope you enjoyed this.